All right. Faisal, thank you so much for joining me on the Top Agent Podcast. Really appreciate your time. My pleasure. Honored to be here. Thank you. Amazing. So, you know, as you know, we're doing a, a series dedicated to uh, the COVID crisis and, and the impact it's had on realtors and the real estate industry as a whole. But more importantly, how realtors can be proactive and productive during these unprecedented times. Um, and, and I'm so happy to be speaking with you about this. You know, you're, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's just on your website, number five Remax agent in the world, sold the most homes in Canada, both in 2018 and 2019, um, over 3 billion in sales. So like the credentials speak for themselves. There's really no one better for folks to hear from during this crisis than someone like yourself. Uh, so I really do appreciate the time once again, but, um, before we get into it, do you mind just telling us just a bit about yourself and your real estate background, if you don't mind? Sure, absolutely. So I um, started in the business in 1988. I was uh, still in high school, 18 years old. Uh, uh, got into it by accident, believe it or not. I was watching a late night TV show and a character by the name of Tom Vu was on this you know, yacht with beautiful women and showing his Rolls Royce and his sports cars and his mansions and said, real estate is the way to success and I can do it. You can do it too. I'm like, Hey, I want to be this guy. So of course I took a community college course. It was six weeks at the time and um, it led to licensing. Uh, of course, being young at the time, it was very hard to get anybody to take you seriously. I was turned down by pretty much every multinational real estate company, joined an independent uh, gentleman was 72 years old, Reed Maneri, and uh, he remained my mentor until he passed away. Um, but that was my sort of early start in the business. From there, I went into uh, a company called Realty World for five years, and then I've been with uh, a Remax for just over 26 years. So uh, that's been, it's a, been a great path. I don't, did, didn't have much of a career before that. Uh, high school was really the career before that. So hey, wow, that's, that's, awesome. that's amazing. That's, that's awesome. So is, so I want to ask number five Remax agent in the world. Is that like number of transactions, like volume? Uh, that's, that's, that's based on earned commissions. Okay. Uh, in the world. Uh, and so number one in Canada for commissions and transactions and then number five in the world. Amazing. Congratulations. That is just incredible. I mean, you, you really you. don't uh, come across that too often at all. So that, that's huge. That congratulations. And you're out of um, Cambridge. Yeah. It's just so about an hour West of Toronto. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Well, yeah, awesome. Thanks so much for sharing the background. Um, so we're now, I guess, well over a month into this, you know, shelter in place lockdown that we're in, in Ontario here. Um, right off the bat, I guess, like what has, has been the biggest changes in the day to day in your business? So, you know, we, we as realtors are programmed to have this positive business mindset. And, and everything we do is from a mindset level and, and we apply that to our business. The shift that has happened and, and almost instantly and and for someone like myself who who does you know a lot of volume and is very much sort of submersed in this business to to have that shift uh, surprisingly it came very naturally uh, i think you know when you're in a situation of crisis or that's when you really kind of find out who you really are and in that moment the shift that occurred for me is i went from go 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 business 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 uh, we were hitting it out of the park. Uh, sales were at an all-time high uh, pre-COVID. When this occurred, my shift went from mindset to heart set, more to soul set, to like looking into myself to say, okay, what would I want to do at this? What's right to do at this point? What do I need to do to support and provide solutions? Um, and let's put business aside. Because this is not the time to look at business. This is not the time to talk about buying and selling because there's a bigger issue at hand. And, and, and you know, I, had, I adopted that sort of mindset to become heart set and start thinking with my heart. All of my advertising instantly, I changed from, you know, thinking of buying or selling to thank you to the frontline workers. We're here to support you. We're here to provide solutions. And I take being essential very seriously. I don't use being essential uh, as an opportunity to ramp up my business because the actions that we're taking as agents today or as business people today, those actions will be remembered 
post COVID. So it's very important that your messaging is uh, in line with your true self. It's very important that you don't come across um, trying to take advantage of something. My thoughts have been that if there's a deal in the pipeline, if you've sold and need to buy, if you've bought and need to sell, and you're already in process, then we are here to help you transact. We're here to provide solutions. We're here to support you right throughout that journey. But if you're simply selling because you think it's a good time or because you heard it's a good time or you read something or some agent has called you, and, and that's happening, unfortunately, I'm hearing a lot of this, where you know there's this fear mongering going on. And I just don't think it's right. Um, I've had the benefit, let's call it, of being through a few recessions in my career. And I'm trying to align this situation to what I experienced in the past. And what's interesting about that is, so I, I, as I mentioned, I started in the business in 1988. In 1990, we started hitting a recession. During that recession, uh, we saw certain shifts happening. But you know, in those days, people were buying like it was candy. Uh, they were flipping. People were quitting their day jobs because they were making twenty, thirty thousand dollars per flip, and they thought, "Hey, I can make more money doing this than I can, you know, working my day job." But what that created was this abundance of inventory, and as that happened, and interest rates started climbing, um, there were not enough buyers to absorb that inventory. Then, two thousand and eight. Let's look at it. In 2008, when we saw that dip occur and, you know, the big things happening in the U.S., luckily we were insulated in Canada because of the government and the laws and the banking rules and regulations. But uh, what we saw in 2008, that people decided to do nothing. And when they did nothing, that created pent-up demand from buyers. So yes, we had a blip. Yes, there was, you know, a little bit of an horizon. But that recovered between six to nine months. We were in full recovery. And I remember in those days, in 2008 and 2009, um, and you know, we, I, I work in Cambridge, as I said, and uh, we have the big Toyota manufacturing plant, and they were doing layoffs, and a lot of the companies were laying off. And I was having clients calling me, saying that, hey, you know, I just got laid off, I gotta sell my house. And easy for me to say, great, I'll be there and I'll list your house and we'll sell it. But it didn't feel right for these people to lose five, seven, 10% of their, and in most cases that was their down payment um, and go back down to zero. That was an opportunity that I learned from because I provided solutions to them, uh, be it uh, deferring of their mortgage, be it refinancing, whatever needed to be done, we did to help them get through that storm. And that's where we are today. Uh, we're, we're in that storm and being reactive, fear mongering, uh, self promotion. So I, I kind of I kind of break it up to three cycles. There's the zero to thirty days. What do I do? The thirty to sixty days. What do I do? And then the sixty to ninety days. What do I do? The thirty to sixty, in my opinion, is show support, show gratitude, show that you're there. Forget real estate. Just show that you're there. Show support to the people that have supported you put the message out there that you're there in humanity, period. Phase two, which is this where we're in now, 30 to 60 day period of this pandemic. This is the time to start putting messaging, a positive messaging out there, but at the same time, reality messaging. Yes, we're going to see an influx of inventory. Yes, there are going to be job losses. Yes, people are going to be in a position of uh, you know, financial distress. However, pre-COVID, there was a lack of inventory and a huge supply of buyers. Many of those buyers will still be there. For every listing that I was taking, I was having seven to 10 offers coming in on those. Okay, we may not see seven to 10, we may go back down to one or two. We may not see 5% over ask, we may see full ask or close to ask, so there will be an adjustment period, but the messaging now needs to be, what do you expect? What do you truly expect? If you really think there's going to be a crash, okay, then be true to yourself and say, I think there's going to be a crash. I don't believe there will be. I believe there will be a short-term leveling, and then I believe there will be a surge because people will get confidence back in. The fundamentals of real estate have not changed, and realistically, we don't have supply, and I'm talking on a macro level. 
What happens in Toronto and what happens in Vancouver does not define the rest of Canada. We have our independent communities that we have to look at. And we're in some cases, and I feel very fortunate being in the region of Waterloo, that we're insulated and we have growth. We have tech sector jobs. We have manufacturing. We have institutions. We have universities. So there's a lot of employment that is still there that will hopefully help us, you know, accelerate out of this as soon as we're on a flat run. Yeah, no, you, uh, you hit a lot of points and make a lot of sense. A lot of the things that are topics that I wanted to uh, unpack a bit. So um, I, I love what you said, though, mindset to heart set. I think that's, that's so important right now, um, especially real estate, like being such a relationship driven business, of course. And, you know, one way to build relationships and build trust is to provide value to people and, and real value. It's really easy to, to fake it, but you know, value that comes right from the right place and comes from the heart, like you said. And, you know, I've been seeing some, some creativity in realtors who are, you know, doing little things like, you know, organizing online events and like bingo nights, for example, for people in the community online, uh, just to get people's mind away from the current situation. But, what are just to like dial in on that topic like what are some of the ways you're thinking about uh, providing value to your network right now uh, or if you can provide some specific things you're doing uh, or your colleagues are doing that you're seeing so on on, on a consistent basis um, the message out there is we're here to support you uh, whatever you need you need groceries picked up you need anything you need some supplies uh, whatever you need we are here and the messaging has to be done properly. Like so, and, and I said this to, to my office, um, that stay true to who you are and who you were previously. So for example, I, you know, was not one to send handwritten notes to people or, uh, but I have a CRM contact management system that does it. But my advertising was on a very macro level. So, you know, I'm on 21 buses, I'm on billboards, I'm on benches, I'm on arenas. So what I've done is I've shifted all of that messaging to a messages of gratitude so I can do it on a macro level. If all of a sudden I start writing handwritten letters to people, they're going to say, okay, what's up with this guy? This is not consistent with, so don't, don't all of a sudden try to become somebody who you're not because that's what's expected to you or that's what the messaging has been. The messaging is, yes, stay in contact and whatnot. So I'm using social media in, in, in a very large way, um, regular postings. Um, you know, one of, my, one of my postings on Instagram was, it's okay to do nothing. It's okay to do nothing. And that's the opposite of what many realtors are doing right now. And the reason I said that is because I truly believe that the other messaging um, has just been that it's not pandemic selling is not a thing. So that's taking the fear out of people's minds that, Oh, I, it's a pandemic. I better sell. So when you come from that place of um, confidence and abundance, you're, you're putting the right messaging out to people, but really it, it's about being consistent in what you do not stop. Don't shut down. That's the worst thing you can do. Um, people who were regular posters because, you know, and, and that's the thing with social media platforms, there has to be a level of business and then there has to be a level of personal and there has to be consistent engagement. Um, so if you were posting just listings before, um, you know, the pandemic situation, uh, people are like, oh, I have nothing to post now. Yes, you do. You can post personal things and then somehow make that relevant to your business and just offer information, just offer solutions to people. And, you know, I, yesterday I posted about virtual tours. So we as an industry um, are really hanging our hat right now on virtual buying and virtual tours. And I'm going to put some caution out there on that. That's a tool. It's not the way to sell. And, you know, open houses were the reason that for sale by owners, Fizbo's felt that, hey, why am I going to pay this agent 5% commission or 6% commission? I'll just do open houses and I'll sell my home. We opened the door for open houses by showing people how to do it. As a realtor today, if you're hanging your hat 
on, it's easy as a virtual tour. I can list your home right now and virtually. I don't even have to meet with you. I'll have a crew come in, take photographs, and we'll sell it virtually. We'll do it. And you know, I believe in technology as a tool, as a complement, but not as a primary factor in myself. You can't take the human touch out of it. You can't take the senses out of it. And when you start promoting that, what you're doing is you're becoming a testimonial and you're becoming a, a brand amba ambassador for virtual tour companies that are going to come out and mark my words on this. For $495, we can list your home virtually and have it sold. Why do you need a realtor? So people are embracing it, which is great, but don't become dependent on it and certainly don't become a promoter of it. That's the tool. I've been using virtual tours, 3D, 3D tours, uh, floor plans for the last 12 or 15 years as a complement to my business, not as a primary focus. Yeah, got it. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. I, I agree with with that sentiment for sure. Um, I want to go back. I like what you, how you broke it down th this particular crisis into like segments, like zero to thirty days, like show support and gratitude, which you provided some examples of what you're doing. And I guess now we're in that thirty to sixty um, range, day range. So. What specifically is, um, you, you talked about in that range, your messaging should change, like more informative, like what do you expect right. during this situation? Like what are some examples of some of the information you're putting out? Like you just mentioned um, about virtual tours as like a tool. Right. So the messaging is that, um, so a few things and, and you know, you're invited and anybody's invited to go onto my Instagram and see the videos that I've posted there. So uh, one of the main messages that I'm putting out right now is uh, about my expectations of a surge in the market after COVID and why I feel that. So I've talked about that. Uh, some of the messages are uh, don't mix up deferrals with forgiveness on mortgages. Uh, also understand that deferring your mortgage could affect your credit. So make sure that if you are deferring that you get something from your bank. So these are all messages of concern for people and it's genuine concern that I don't want people to get into a situation where they think they're getting something and then they're just having an adverse effect on them. Last, uh, lastly, one of my messages was that typically March, April, May, our spring market, especially in the community where I live, where we expect a lot of people coming in from out of town because our values are 30% below GTA and whatnot. Um, we expect March, April, May to be very strong months because end of June, uh, kids are finished school. July, people are usually on holidays. When they come back, it's too late. So we really try to ramp up our, our business in March, April, and May to get that June, July closing. And then people can be settled in for September school opening. So my message right now is that the spring market has been extended. The spring market the unintended consequences of this pause is that we're going to have June, well, right from mid-May to June, July, and August as still strong primary selling months because people will not be going on, unfortunately, on holidays. And that will allow us to recoup a lot of this lack in business in those months. So the spring market has just been extended into the summer now. So again, and that's, that's in line with my message of don't panic sell. Don't feel, because you know, I'm used to having 15 to 20 listings. I have right now in my funnel, probably 15, 17 listings ready to be lit. They're signed, but I'm mm -hmm. holding them. And I'm holding them because I know that there's a lack of audience. In our marketplace, we depend on people coming out of the GTA. Now, am I going to list a home and then wait for somebody else to sell their home and then start that whole domino effect? I, I eliminate the, the, the options of having multiple offers when I'm doing that because it's just there's not enough activity in the marketplace. So, you know, deferring sometimes it's like, you know, you, you know, Abe Lincoln had a, had a great quote, uh, you know, uh, give me, give me uh, six hours to chop down a tree. I'll use four hours sharpening my ax. So this is the time to sharpen your ax. This is the, the, this 60 day period here that we're in. This is the time to put out some positive messaging and really sharing your thoughts on what's going to happen post COVID. Then we get to the 60 to 90 day, start your self promotion again. Now, as we're coming out of it, you're coming out of it and your messaging should be, I have, uh, even if it's virtual, 
I can send you comparables. I can send you listings, what's sold, what's listed. I can send you a comparison of what was happening pre-COVID to what happened during the pandemic and what I expect to happen afterwards and start sharing those types of things. Also, educating people when you, you know when you know we're, we're a headline community or headline audience we see 20 sales are down 22 percent sales are down 22 percent that's not bad when most agents are not really like i sell 400 homes a year i'm not selling anything right now so of course i'm down 80 percent 90 percent but my prices are not down so pe people are equating sales to price and but that's headlines for sure. You're totally right. I say that all the time. Like we're, we're living in like a headline reading of society, but um, great points. Thank you so much for, for unpacking both segments. I think that's really key uh, for a lot of people. Um, so, you know, you, you touched on it a bit as well. So, you know, if, although things aren't really at all business as usual in real estate, um, still considered an essential service, like you said, and, and there are still situations where people have no choice but to buy or sell. Um, and I know you mentioned you currently have several active listings on the go right now. Um, I'm curious to hear, like, how is that going? Like the actual transaction process? Like, can you talk uh, about some of the precautions you have to take or, or what to be mindful of if you have to help a client buy or sell uh, during these times? Right. So, so when I say I've have listings signed, these are listings we haven't processed. So okay. 15, 17 listings that are, ready to be processed, but I'm holding them. And I've advised my sellers not to sell right now because I really don't feel that this is the right time because they don't have to. They're not in a position where they've already bought. So they don't have to. So why put, put everybody in harm's way uh, by exposing something? So again, that's me doing my part. And I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but I've picked, you know, and I've said, pick a lane. This is not a time to start pivoting, saying, well, I'll do this and I'll do that. Pick a lane, stick to it, because that messaging will be resonating with people later on. Um, for those listings, and I do have listings that are on the market as well. For those listings that are on the market, um, we are just asking people to follow the protocols. Uh, of course, we have to have waivers signed, uh, like we all do. Um, and, and it's also a liability issue. Uh, I, as an agent, want to ensure that if my seller is instructing me to continue moving forward with this, that I protected myself from any sort of liability and they have to sign off saying that, you know, we're selling for this reason and we've instructed you based on our circumstances to, to move forward with it. But gloves, uh, booties, uh, masks, um, disinfecting, um, you know, we're, we're providing our clients with all of the necessary items uh, that are going to make them as safe. And of course, they're taking their own precautions as well. Uh, fortunately, many of the homes that I have are vacant. So it, again, mitigates a lot of the issues. Okay, got it. Um, I'm curious to hear from you as well. So, you know, uh, a lot of people think that things will never like truly get back to normal the way they were, like little things. Like, for example, you know, I've heard some people say like handshakes won't be as common anymore or I come from a European background and we do a lot of the double cheek kisses, you know, like things like that, very minimal. Um, and, and just a lot of those like close interactions with people could, could change permanently perhaps. But how do you think if at all real estate will change going forward when, when this is all said and done? I think that, well, definitely that close proximity transacting is going to be very limited. I think people are going to want their personal space now more than ever. Um, I think open houses that that's going to change. Uh, uh, and I, you know what? I'm okay with it because I don't believe in open houses. I, I haven't done an open house in, I don't know, 15 years. Um, my business model is very different and I, and I, uh, I don't have a team. Therefore I'm not looking to feed uh, listings to those team members in order to have open houses and have nosy neighbors coming. So my whole philosophy on open houses is very different. So it won't affect me because I've already coached my sellers on why open houses don't work. Open houses are for me as an agent to promote myself. I use your home as a retail outlet. All of that is part of my spiel. So it's not going to affect me. But those who became dependent on open houses, it's going to be very, very difficult for them. So they're going to have to find different ways of lead generation. And this is what it's all about. Uh, being prepared and sort of learning. And that's, that's an important message for, 
for colleagues right now is take these times to learn, get on podcasts, get on, you know, Zooms and understand what other people are doing and start adapting to those ways because there's going to be a shift. There's no question. There's going to be a complete right. shift. And it's going to affect buyers agents more so than I think listing agents uh, because they're in and out of many homes. So they're going to have to use further precautions, but yeah, there will be, uh, and I think lead generation companies will do very well. And that's another thing to be cautious on which lead gen companies you're associating yourself with. Makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. Um, switching gears a little bit. So, you know, I, I want to hear from you, you know, very top, very successful agent. Like what has been your focus during the crisis? Like outside of um, like the messaging and the communication with your clients, like for example, in a regular scenario, regular market, uh, if I were to ask that question, most people might answer with, you know, my main focus is prospecting. Um, I'd imagine that's not so much the case at all right now. Um, at least not so directly, but what would you say has been your, your main focus uh, right now during this crisis? So, uh, uh, well, prospecting is something that I didn't do on a sort of a door knocking level or a phone call level. Um, so that, that's something that I've never had as part of my business model. Um, th my entire uh, sort of prospecting model has been brain advertising brand marketing and associating myself with a big brand so that I can leverage off of that brand. Um, so that messaging that I'm doing right now is very much in line with community support, hospital support, um, wherever, wherever the support is needed. And that's, as I mentioned earlier, all of my marketing has shifted to that. You know, we've got all the posters are reading, you know, we thank uh, messages of gratitude, basically, for all people that are supporting us that are essential workers. So that's the shift. Um, I am sending mass emails that I normally would send. So, for example, you know, on anniversary date of a home, we're sending, um, you know, lottery tickets or whatever to the client. Um, but in addition to that, right now we're sending a nice little uh, letter saying that we're there to support but it's all part of normal. It's not something that we're doing that's not consistent with our normal marketing because we don't want to come across um, sort of not genuine. Yeah, so that's great. That's like, like you said, it just stays consistent with what you've always been doing, which you're saying is brand marketing. Uh, so just keeping that that same focus, but, but just tweaking. Not, not pulling back. And you know, that's, that's unfortunate. Um, Believe me, it, it's it's great for those who want to continue, and I understand why. But you know, uh, the large marketing companies, the advertising companies, they're offering phenomenal deals right now because so many people are pulled off of their pulled off their marketing, and and that's one lesson to be learned right now is start putting into place uh, a format that you can weather these storms you know, moving forward. So if you were stuck in a situation like this, it's not okay. I'm, I'm, I'm one commission check away from calling it quits. So yeah, these no, are yeah. our place now. That's key for sure. Um, you know, I strongly believe that in times of, you know, hardship and economic downturns, uh, like we're seeing leaders can really emerge. Um, you know, and obviously a lot of businesses, unfortunately, uh, get weeded out during times like these. Um, but, but as a realtor, you know, as someone who is in the business for the long haul, like what are some specific things you can do to ensure you come out of this stronger and more resilient than ever before? I know you mentioned you've been through a couple of uh, recessions in the past. So uh, what's your advice there? So um, it's par partly it's the support. The other part is to remember those who have been loyal to you throughout your career, be it clients be it staff. So I have three full-time staff that are not licensed agents. They, they work for me. Um, I committed not to lay them off, not to cut back any hours, to keep them fully employed. Because, you know, when you look at the grand scheme of things here, um, hopefully this is not going to be, you know, three more than three months of this, this disarray. Um, I don't want them to feel that at the first opportunity, for me to cut back or save a little bit here and there, um, they were axed or they were given some hardships. So, you know, really think about your actions right now. Really think about 
um, what you're doing to support the people that have supported you, be it your office, be it, whether you're with a brokerage, whether those people work for you directly or indirectly, but just supporting them. And, and, you know, financial support right now is very important to them because they're suffering the same as all of us. And, and if you're in a position where you can help someone else, then that's the time to do it. So that's, that's something that keeping um, that consistent and trying to support them through their hardships. I love that. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, last thing I have from you, and, and you touched on it before, but I want to uh, sort of unpack that a bit. Um, and you made some recent comments about this in some videos that I saw recently, but I'm really curious to hear from you. This is this whole COVID crisis happened during what was gearing up to be probably one of the hottest real estate markets the, the greater Toronto area has ever seen. And then this happened and just shut everything down. So what are your thoughts on how the real estate market will bounce back? And when do you think things will start picking up again in a meaningful way? You know, cause you know, a lot of people are, wondering that and asking those same questions. So I'm hearing, uh, I'm curious to, to hear it from you. So um, I think it'll be phased in. Uh, we have to take our uh, movement through government protocols. So when the premier says, okay, we're opening this up or when real estate offices start opening up for flow, that will be first phase. Uh, the next phase will be when there's, uh, you know, larger gatherings that are allowed. Because what it is, it's really a function of confidence. It's, it, that's primarily, there's no question there's financial distress and there's financial concern. But I think for the most part, people have learned to navigate through that now. The initial shock um, of not having that paycheck or reduced income, but there's also reduced expenses. Right. There's also reduced expenses. We're not going out as much. We're not, you know, doing the things that we were you know, not shopping as much. And that so, so people are balancing. So once that comes, I think confidence will start coming back. When that comes back, we'll see sort of a, a surge in the market as far as inventory. I expect that fully. But remember, interest rates have also dropped. So that's going to open up a lot more people to enter the market provided they were able to sort of weather the storm. And even if they weren't, they'll get back on their feet, maybe three months, six months, nine months. So interest rates have been down. Um, inventory levels will be higher, so they won't have to compete as much. I don't think prices are going to drop. I really don't feel prices are going to drop. I don't expect the multiple offers to be uh, as high. The stress level, uh, st uh, stress tests that were um, implemented have been relaxed from the, from the banks. So these are reminders that I've been putting out on social media that think about that. And this is the time, get in touch with your bank, get in, get alignment on getting your mortgages and all of that stuff, get everything in a row now so that when things do open up, you benefit. And I truly believe that by spring next year, we'll be on that upswing again. I really believe that. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And you're right. I think the, the, the main piece is that like the buyer confidence level, and um, just seeing as how pretty quickly we like people have sort of normalized to this situation. Uh, I agree with you in that, you know, I think buyer confidence will, will, will normalize and, and uptick a lot faster than people think. So uh, we'll see. But yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Um, Faisal, I do want to be mindful of your time. I just want to thank you so much again for setting aside the time to speak with me. I really do appreciate it. Um, this has been amazing. Just so many actionable insights. No question that many many realtors listening to this will, will find this conversation extremely motivating and encouraging um it's also been motivating to me you know seeing someone like yourself firsthand how you know hard work and dedication pays off and, and to, to reach the heights that you have uh, congratulations yet again for all your successes um so yeah thank you again for sharing your insights providing value to me and my audience i hope you continue to stay well and be safe and um, hopefully we can do this again sometime thank you my pleasure all right. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Take care. Stay well.